Twin Peaks episode four. We start out in this episode with a sketch of Jake's favorite character, Killer Bob. Yes, we do. Likeness is impeccable. Mm-hmm. That was from Laura's mom's vision. And then we have an interview with Jacoby as he... In front of a map of Tibet. And they, which, yeah. <laughs> and he puts the golf balls in his mouth with magic. Talks about Hawaii. What? What's going on with his glasses? They are like permanent 3D glasses. The first time always, watched, it's like the the glasses just tinted. He has one blue and one red. I don't know where he got those 3D glasses, but you want a pair. I ever since the first time I saw this, I was like, dude, that is the coolest. You're always ready for a 3D movie. I mean, Jaws three comes on, mm-hmm. you're ready. I mean, you can get prescription 3D glasses if you really want. It's so cool. Also in this episode, we have a lot of mill conspiracy talk. A lot. A lot. We're getting, we're really getting there because now Ben has talked to Leo about starting that fire. At the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. Was that at the end? That was near the end, yeah. Then the one-armed man, which I'm pretty sure is some hardcore police, police harassment in that scene. They really have no suspicion to be there. Except for a dream. Other than Coop's dream. Well, they, they, I, I, they, that's all they're going off of. They're going off of two dreams. But here's, two separate dreams. Here's the thing. This is the first time where they have, like, <laughs> made basically a bust over the dream. Instead of any actual evidence. It's yeah. a good thing they didn't tell that one armed man that. Especially when he started crying, thinking about his lost arm. Then we have Donna and Audrey talking in the bathroom about how... Donna's going to help, Audrey's going to help Coop solve the case. Mm-hmm. And then she goes talk to her dad about going to cosmetics or something in the store, which obviously she's trying to get to the perfume counter, mm-hmm. which is apparently where they recruit prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> the police go to the vet and confiscate all of their files looking for a bird, which as you pointed out, those bird pecks could have just been from a bird on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently not, though, because Jacques Renault had a parakeet. Then we have t- a, t- a nice talk about women in the shooting range mm-hmm. while we're shooting up some stuff. Then we have a nice talk about men in the r and <laughs> Equal time. Equal time. James meets Madeline and gives her that gives her those classic James looks. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we have the bust where the police go to break into Jacques' house where and Bobby is planting Leo's evidence. jacket. Yeah. And then jumps out a second story window and runs away? Yep. Okay. You know, you can't say it's that unrealistic. I've I done it. I know. <laughs> and then we end off the episode with Pete and Josie talking about fishing. Mm-hmm. Because that is Pete's also, only she characteristic. Get, she she also got a call from Domino Sucker. Yeah. The, what's his name? I, I, I'm the wrong person to ask. He's married to Diner Lady. <laughs> yes. Domino Man is married to, di- to Diner Lady. Who's having an affair with Gas Man. <laughs> Who is married to... Who, Eye Patch. Eye Patch. <laughs> and is the uncle of James. I'm glad you're picking up on all the people in this town. I have, a, I have a single note left. Okay. Laura and her mom are slash were prophets? Who knows? I Am I adding profit to the list of things I am? Laura was also a prophet. Possibly a whore. She had too many jobs. Well, she was a busy girl. But who killed Laura Palmer, Jake? We're going to keep with Bob until I hear otherwise. Okay. Next time. I don't know, but I love it. The recording has stopped. Well, that's not good.